great show. Uh, I encourage it. So, Otaku, I think you're leading us off today. Sure. I am. So, our first show that we are looking at is going to be the Do-Over Damsel Conquers the Dragon Emperor. His director is Kentaro Suzuki, who did some work on Flying Witch. The studio is JC Staff. Uh, the source comes from light novels that are still currently ongoing. Uh, I watched the PV. Um, it looks like it could be fun. Uh, it's another entry into the do my life over genre where some great tragedy befalls our character in the very beginning and magically they are able to do their life over some set timeline in the past. And in particular for this show, uh, our main character you know, she uh, gets to go back six years and do things over uh, because her um, fiancé in the beginning ends up uh, betraying her and putting her to death. So she wants to relive her life and hopefully not die. So it's a Groundhog Day do-over. Looks like it could be fun because uh, she actually proposes to basically a dragon emperor instead of the guy that she got engaged to. And it's uh, wondering, like, can she fix him and live? Or does she end up finding a similar fate in this alternative timeline? So uh, I thought it, I, I'm looking forward to giving it a shot. It looks it looks like it could be good. And I usually like JC staff stuff. So. OK, OK, very nice. What do we have next? Uh, that will be me with Shangri-La Frontier Season 2. Uh, so Shangri-La Frontier... You got the title season... wrong. It's Birdhead Nipple McGee Season 2. Oh, I didn't know that's what we the were burden calling in. it. The bird in the The bird in <laughs> Burn uh, so... the cunt. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is by Studio C2C. Uh, this is a... Uh, one of those uh, VR like game reality games that the main character goes into, and he's known for playing trash trash games the entire time with all the bugs, all like the craziness that just is glitchy and whatnot. And so he's tasked to play a good game for once, and using his skills as a gamer, basically goes through and plays a bunch of it. Uh, and this is season two. The fr it's. Uh, fun show the battles were really fun to watch the thought process behind a lot of it you know where the characters are thinking what they're doing and like what they're actually doing just like playing through the game mechanics and i'm looking at looking forward to just more of the same which is what i think is what the show is looking to give us and exploring this world you don't you don't learn crazy amounts about it but like the little bits you go through has been great so far and i just like the little bit of character development we're getting from a lot of the side characters and a lot of their little silly moments nobody overstays their welcome in the show and i'm looking forward to more of that i don't remember exactly what episode we reviewed this you can go to our website and check because we did review season one i remember being overly pretty favorable about this one it was just a good solid time it knew what it was and just didn't feel like it wasted my time too much and uh looked good sounded good characters were likable i would definitely watch more of it birdhead i mean what more could you say let's well, go more you could say is nipples mcgee but <laughs> <laughs> that's the second part of it let's see uh first one we got oh go ahead oh no you go, go ahead. ahead go ahead go ahead after you i i forgot you put us in a strange order so I tried to assign us the shows that we had on our list based on stuff. So it's not a uh, round table. I'm not holding back pancake. I'm not. Oh, I am kind of holding you back because, you know, your, your you theory will come later. Pinned down. Oh, no. no. no I will say Go. the Go people in the Twitch are glad to see you finally with your own screen. You are released. You're unshackled. She is. Her power level has finally been unleashed. Uh, the next over nine thousand show we have, as I oh so coolly and uh, technically savvily, which is not a word, uh, switch out the visuals on our Twitch, is the Blue Wolves of Mibu. This is, I think, will be streaming on Crunchyroll. It hasn't been announced yet, but uh, I'm rolling the dice and assuming that's what it's going to end up on. But if I'm wrong, please don't scare me and yell at me. I will cry. Uh, this takes place in 1863, which puts it at about the end of the 
Edo period, which is right before the modern or Meiji era. And essentially there's political upheaval, as you might expect, right before, spoilers, uh, a big, you know, upheaval of the uh, political spectrum in Japan. But essentially you follow young orphan Neo, who uh, is not the Matrix guy, it's an IO, but it's, it's in my head it's the same person, who eventually comes upon two central figures of names that you might be aware of if you know Japanese history, uh, Hijikata Toshizo and Okita Soji, who are two founding members of a group of hated ronin known as the Blue Wolves of Mibu, um, and they would later be known as the Shinsengumi. So it's probably a story about the founding of the Shinsengumi in their early days and how they kind of changed the path of Japan and cross politics and all this other stuff. It's based on a finished, I cannot stress it, in a finished 14 volume manga by the same creator of the Days series, which is like a soccer manga. I don't know if Andrew's seen that. I have not. I have. I've seen a, a lot of soccer series. I know. That's why I'm throwing it to you. How, how was that series? Because I can't, I can't vouch for it. Uh, it, it it's it's one of those things where it is a more character focused um, show. So if it if it follows a lot of the character stylings of days, I think the show is going to be an interesting piece. And it it seems like this person probably is wanting to do something more serious. So I think it's going to be a very interesting character study in a lot of ways. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. I actually had this on my list. Um, that said, despite it being based on my finished manga, I do have some reservations based on the PV because. Uh, it kind of looked blocky and stocky and chunky, not very promising artistically. And it's done by Mahu Film, which is a studio that just hasn't turned out turned out a bunch of great contents. I mean, the last thing I've really seen are um, nothing good. So uh, we'll see, but maybe solid foundations. We'll see if that's enough to carry the Blue Wolves of Mibu into review territory. What do we have next? Uh, that's going to be me. So we're also going to be looking at Tohai Urarate Mahjong Tohai Roku, directed by Jun Hatori. And the studio is Eastfish Studio, who most recently worked on A Condition Called Love. The source material is a finished manga that's 12 volumes, 115 chapters. Uh, I, will see, I will say the PV was very well animated. Um, and it could be an interesting entry into the gaming genre, you know, as it adds kind of a darker high stakes twist. Um, essentially, the best Mahjong player um, in the city happens to be a young high school boy. His name is Kay. He's a teenager. He doesn't really talk much, but because he um, is is uh, very observational, his uh, skills in Mahjong are technically unrivaled. And he's always playing people in the rich and powerful. And uh, he just so happens to be hiding a young girl named Amina, who has entered the country illegally and protecting her from being deported. So although he spends his days sleeping through class and his nights playing high stakes mahjong, waiting for when a truly worthy opponent arrives. So I think it could be interesting. Uh, I like I like anime that has gaming elements into it and just adding an extra layer. Uh, definitely drew my attention. Uh, are any of you guys going to check this one out? No, only because learning how Mahjong worked and the rules to it, just so I could watch um, the like prequel sort of series to Kaiji was a pain in the butt, and I don't want to relearn it. Uh, no, that said, I, I love those kind of game twisty things where you know you can get this weird anime isms, and that's always really fun. I don't know. It depends on how much it is game versus how much it is the rest of the show. But, you know, if th 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 they always have potential in my eyes. If you can make it through Chia Hafuru, you can make it through this. Yeah, but that show is A, good, and B, easy to understand. Mahjong is like <laughs> dense with stuff. Wow. So if it's not leaning too hard in like the intricacies of the scoring and how to like maneuver around your comp opponent, like, yeah, it'll be easy for folks in the West to like jump in. But if it's, like I said, like that other show... Uh, it's a little bit um, of a barrier to entry. So I'm hoping it's one of them. I don't know. Well, for this next one, I'm sorry I don't have the music blitzing through your headphones right now. Maybe Mitz can put it in post. But what do we have? MF Ghost Season 2, which MF does not sound stand for motherfucking to my dismay. 
Because I thought it <laughs> meant that for a while. <laughs> you can still call it that. In your I heart. do call it that. In my heart. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> um, it's going to be, it's Felix Film, and the director is Tomihito Nakamura. Naka, which is the same as the last season. Um, I watched the PV. It looks more of the same. Hopefully he stays in that sweet 15. I don't have a whole lot to say about it. Lots of cars go vroom. And hopefully it's more exciting than season one. I was getting bored uh, towards the end of it. So I know we talked about like Shangri-La Frontier. Like, oh, we kind of like season one. We kind of expect it to be more of the same. But season two of Shangri-La is going to go on new adventures and new stuff like mf ghost is just going to be literally a straight continuation mm -hmm. of the first season considering they stopped season one like middle of a race so like yep. i know exactly what i'm going to get with season two and that doesn't you know entice me or inspire me but it also is like a safe pick because i know ex I, I know what this is going to be i don't need to watch yeah, this. yeah i already know what i think of it and it's yeah what it it's, is it's if you like it it's going to be you know we know what happens at the end of the race. Hopefully, hopefully they don't drag the end another season. Um, but not a whole lot to say. It's motherfucking ghost season two. <laughs> say no more. <laughs> uh, with that, we can move on to a show that I think Caroline had on her list, but I'm going to try to uh, do it justice. And that is Demon Lord 2099. And I think there's actually another show called Demon Lord retry like there's a couple shows called demon lord this is 2099 based on a light novel this will be on crunchyroll done by interviews with monster girls director ryo ando and it is set in the cyberpunk metropolis shinjuku in the year 2099 the title wow mind blown where the legendary demon lord veltol has his second coming five centuries in the making uh, but this modern era is nothing like he you know, remembered all those years ago. So he has to uh, come back to uh, take over Earth in a way that is a little more modern than he remembers. So, you know, I'm expecting this to kind of be a show that actually Andrew mentioned earlier, Devil is a Part-Timer, which is this demon coming to modern big city human life mixed with a little bit of Ya Boy Kong Ming, which is like the old fashioned person coming to modern era. I don't know if that will be good or bad. I will say this is JC Staff, which is a show that I'm not the biggest fan of, but they're doing six shows this season, and that's a lot. That's maybe a bit too much. I'm hoping, as I always do, that they actually put all their eggs in one basket and make all the rest suffer, because watching six <laughs> middle-of-the-road shows just don't really do it for me. This PV didn't blow me away, but who knows? I have been on the cyberpunk kick as of late, though I can't see this using it as more than a shallow aesthetic, more than like a deep, you know, takedown of how technology has influenced humanity and kind of getting away from our control. I don't know, but that's Demon Lord 2099. It's probably could be fun. I mean, if it has a banging OP like Kong Ming, it'll be good. So here's to that. Like At least Mitsugi idiot. won't say ya boy Kong Ming for like four months straight. I'm sorry for boy. everything that show put you through. <laughs> oh, it was a great show. I mean, it was fine. Yeah, it but was, you'd, it had have a great to, ED. you'd have to wake up every morning to ya boy. <laughs> no, all day, every day. It was just constant. It was like the thing. She uh, wasn't doing, hey, DJ. No, Let's the end. Oh, okay. If it's anything like what you described, your boy calming with the devil as a part timer, then the show's gonna be great. Listen, if it's that <laughs> nothing like that, then it's gonna be terrible. That's just my hopes because that's what I think it should be because that's what we want more of. So.